Hello my friends and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to tell you one thing about motorbikes that you probably didn't know. And it's one of those things that once they told me for the first time, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was totally mind blown and I immediately had to go out, jump on my bike and test it out myself. And I'm talking about a phenomenon that most of bikers don't know. Especially because it's something that you hardly realize when you just ride your motorbike or scooter for your daily routine. And moreover, it's something that once you get good in track racing, you must take advantage of it. You must use it. You must know it. But before going deep into this secret, I see that on this channel I have video with around 160,000 views but I only had 38,000 subscribers. If you like motorbikes, cars, more sports and you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and activating the notification by clicking on the bell in order to get notified when new videos come out and in order to support me and help me doing more videos like this one. And I have a special gift for you because once we reach 50,000 subscribers, I will post a special video about the whole story of my life where I will tell you how I went from being totally broke from poor family to becoming a professional motorbikes and cars racer. So what is that weird phenomenon I was talking about? Simply put, when you lean your motorbike, the RPMs go up. The RPMs go up? Well, usually RPMs go up when you accelerate, right? Yes, but also when you lean. Okay, let's imagine that we are going straight with constant gas, the, the, the hand locked on the throttle, thus going at constant speed. For example, let, let's just give some numbers, okay, so we have an idea what we're talking about. For instance, uh, we are in third gear at 100 kilometers per hour at 6,000 RPM, okay? And th these are just random numbers, okay, J just to, to understand it better. Suddenly, we come to a corner, we keep the constant throttle, always at 100 kilometers per hour. And once we lean to make the corner, the RPMs go up at 7,000. So how is it possible that even if I am keeping constant throttle, even if I am keeping constant speed, the RPMs change? I'll tell you why. Let's take a look at how a tire is made. In contrast to a car tire, which is flat, a motorbike tire, it's oval. This is made to allow the bike to lean in corners. The car steers, so the tire is flat. The bike leans, so the tire is oval. When we are going straight, the bike touches the ground with the central part of the tire, which has a certain circumference. But when we lean, the motorbike touches the ground with the side of the tire, which has a smaller circumference. And what does this mean? Let's look at this animation that I made. It's not a wonderful animation, but it gives you the idea, okay? <laughs> So when we are straight and supported by the central part of the tire with the bigger circumference, the wheel does three revolutions to make four meters. But when we are leaning and supported by the outer part of the tire, which has a smaller circumference, the wheel makes more than three revolutions to make four meters. So the more we lean, the more revolution the wheel makes, the faster the wheel spins. So if the wheel spins faster, it means the engine spins faster. And this is why the RPMs go up. Basically, when we lean, it's like if we are shortening the gearings. While when we go back to the straight position, it's like if we put the longer gearings. And I'll show you some practical examples. So let's take, for example, Misano. You probably know it. It's a famous Italian circuit where Superbike and MotoGP and other very important classes race. In Misano we have a corner called Curvone, which is very fast. You do it at 200 km per hour with the 600 and 240 km per hour with the 1000. With the 600 you are flat, with the 1000 you are almost flat. And here I have the telemetry of a friend of mine called Eduardo Mazzoli. Ciao Edo. The green line are the RPM, the red line is the throttle. So when Eduardo is approaching the Curvone and the bike is just a little bit leaned, Eduardo has 14,800 RPM and 100% throttle. When he gets to the mid-corner, completely leaned, 
He's at 15,500 RPM and 100% throttle. And you may say, okay, the RPMs went up because the speed went up because he's still accelerating, right? But let's look at the exit. He puts the bike straight, still at 100% of throttle, and the RPMs go down to 14,200. 1,300 RPM difference between straight and lean. But here's another example. Luca Salvadori, a friend of mine. Ciao, Luca. He is at Imola with the bike straight, 12,000 RPM. As soon as he leans to corner, 14,000. This is crazy, huh? I I'm, I'm wondering how many of you already knew that. And I'm pretty sure that now that you know that, you will listen to the onboard videos or to your bike in a different way. So, talking about something practical now, where do you take advantage of that? One example are the changes of direction. Here is an onboard video from a friend of mine, Fabrizio Perotti. Ciao Fabri. I'm saying ciao to all my rider friends today. And this is the onboard of the track record that he did in Francia Corta three years ago, four years ago. So he's going to make a narrow right corner and after that, a wider left corner. In the right narrow corner, he's in first gear, and this is the correct gear for that corner. But for the left corner, once he gets out, he should be on second. But you know, when you are cornering left at the maximum lean, it's not easy to put the second gear, because the shifter is on the left. So what does he do? As soon as he exits from the right corner, and and he changes direction, he upshifts. And when he upshifts, the RPM go very low. And if in this moment, he wants to accelerate to exit the corner, he wouldn't have enough power because the RPMs are too low. But he doesn't want to accelerate, he wants to corner left. And look at that, as soon as he corners left, the RPMs go up to the correct number for that corner. So this way, by upshifting before the corner, knowing that once he leans, the RPMs go up, he makes his riding much more easy. Because he's not forced to upshift in the middle of the corner or in the exit of the corner. Another example is when you're entering to a fast corner, like in Cartagena which you probably saw in my previous videos. And let's take my own board from that track. When you exit from that chicane, you have a very long right corner that you do it at almost 100% throttle, okay? So you exit from the chicane in third gear. And at this point, you, you would like to accelerate, bring the RPMs up and then upshift. The thing is that, Upshifting in a super fast corner, 100% throttle with 200 horsepower pushing and the bike leaning, it's not the best thing to do. Because imagine that you don't upshift correctly and you are at full throttle and the electronic shifter cuts the power and then you're back to third, you do a huge high side like already happened to me with the R6. I almost crashed. <laughs> so what do you do? Knowing that you're going to make a fast corner and you're going to lean, you upshift earlier. This is called a short shift. upshift because as soon as you start to lean, the RPMs immediately go up and you have the right torque and the right power to do that corner fast. Also in the next corner, look at that, right corner, change of direction, I put two gears. And then as soon as I lean left, the RPMs go up. 
Another example is from Nicolo Canepa, a friend of mine. Ciao Nicolo. <laughs> in Suzuka with the Amar one. I don't know if you know Nicolo, but he's two times endurance world champion. And look at that. He upshifted two gears before getting into the fast corner. So how many of you knew this phenomenon? That's crazy, huh? I already know that now you will take your bike, go out and try it because it's something that you want to see yourself. So if you didn't know that or you simply like this video, please consider subscribing as I mentioned in the, at the beginning of the video because I'm going to do many more videos like this one. Once again, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.